Welcome to ARW. Today I'm going to do a review. I've got a couple of uh, rifle sights from Fayachi. They're the uh, aperture sights, which tend to be called peep sights by a lot of guys. And we're going to mount them on a, on a rifle and look at them and, and give them a thorough inspection. What we have today are two different designs of aperture sights. This is the mount right on the top of your rail type. It's got uh, two different eyepieces, a small one and a large one. And then I've got, sorry, I've got this type, whoops, wrong one. I've got the wrong box. I've got this aperture sight right here, which is my made to be mounted on off to one side of your rail so you can use two different uh, sighting systems at one time and it has the small aperture and the large aperture and aperture sights are uh, often called peep sights you know and uh, they uh, gained wide uses in, in the 19th century in other words 1800s and uh, they uh, they put the round hole on the rear sight and they put a uh, other side, the front side up there on the other end of the rifle. Okay. Now then, uh, the front side can be a post or a bead or whatever you like. And it's a simple matter just to look through that tiny hole, see your sight, and see your target. And using this kind of sights, the hole in the center so it made offhand shots in shooting matches at 200 yards acceptable and easy to do. The golden age of this site appears to have occurred around the uh, end of the 1800s and uh, there the, they were mounted on all kind of hunting rifles, target rifles, you name it, you know. And they had bullseyes that were you know, the, the 9 and 10 rings, and they had a diameter of about 8 inches. And uh, the diameter of the 10 ring is usually about 3 point three inches, something like that. And over the years, there was a lot of perfect shots at these, uh, at these targets using these kind of sights. Uh, they quite often come stock on, you know, standard on a rifle. But if you don't have them on your rifle, you can buy these from... Uh, from the guys that sent them to me, okay? And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the ones that lean over to one side as the, as the secondary sight. We're gonna install those on my rifle first so you can see, uh, you know, what it looks like looking around the, the red dot. Okay. And then when we finished all that, now down below in the little doobly-doo, the information box below the video, I give you a link to both of these sites. One sets up straight on the top of your rail. They, they fit on Picatinny or Weaver rails. As you can see, this rear sight is mounted to the rear of the, of the gun. There's a red dot sight on it there. Let's walk around to the back here. So we worry about the moving handheld stuff. And there's, there's the uh, rear sight, one of the orifice, the aperture. And there's the front sight. And he's, whoop too far and he's leaning over to one side all right I'm gonna go handheld with this uh, camera so you can see what it looks like looking down the, the barrel all right that's with a large aperture and I've never tried looking through these sights before but right in the center of the aperture you can see the the post of the uh, front sight there I can't get the camera close enough to to do this right I don't think it's just not possible <laughs> at least not for me there we go you can see the front side up there with the post sticking up right in the middle now this would be for a, 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 a large target because it's not as precise as the smaller aperture here smaller or as you can see that uh, the view through is a lot tinier. Okay, so I'll hold the rifle in the way that you'd have to hold it to use it like this. 
Using a rifle with an extra sight would mean you'd have to kind of lean the gun over somewhat and look down the sight that way, okay? You see it leaned over here. Or you can stand it back up and look down the red dot. All right, now I'm going to remove the, the uh, sight that's on there now. And we're going to add the, uh, the ones that take the place of the red dot. They'll be right down the dead center. Before we get started, please note that there's a chamber flag in the chamber. This gun's not loaded. It's perfectly safe. There's no magazine in the magazine well. Right now it's just a, an inert piece of plastic and steel. Okay? So then let's get on with things. Now I've installed the sights that are the, what you would call the pop-up sights. They've got a little button over here to one side. You push the button in and raise up the sight. Okay, same thing goes with the front sight. There's a little button on the side of it. Push in the button and raise up the sight. Now I may have that sight backwards. It may be that the button should be on this other side, like the, the back one. But I don't think for any practical thing that it's of any value. It certainly doesn't bother Daisy any. All right. Looking at the rear of this sight, you can see that there are graduations along here. And the way you uh, adjust the sight to sighted ends, you use this little screw here, and this will move the, the uh, aperture from one side to the other. All right. Now there's a kind of unique method of doing the front sight, and I'll try to set the camera up so you can see it. The back sight sets the windage, the front sight sets the elevation. And what you've got here is you've got this tiny little button right there. And if you push that button down, let me do that hide and review, then you can turn that sight and it'll screw upward or downward to adjust uh, the elevation. And pretty much anything that imitates an AR-15 is going to have uh, a sight on the front that the elevation is changed by the front sight and the windage by the rear sight. Both of these sights, the ones that lean over and the ones that stand up straight, or have this same exact design in, uh, in the sight. I would guess that it's you need a little tool to grab hold of that and turn it. It's a tiny little post, but it's got a hex on it, so I imagine you've got a tiny little socket or something somewhere. That would make it easy to turn. If not, probably need a little pliers turn it really well. This type of sights, there's really no, never any need to uninstall them from the rifle because you can just lay them down flat and put another sighting device on top of your rail up there somewhere. And I can tell you when I uh, shot a small bore silhouette. The best shooters were the guys with the Marlin something, you know, I don't remember, 617 or something, 22 rifle that they were lever action, and they had peep sights on them. Those guys could really rack up a pretty good score. Me, I spent my time with buckhorn sights, which are the, the rear sights that are made in a, in a V like that, and it's a lot harder to, to aim with those kind of sights. So, uh, my score wasn't very good. Of course, I wasn't a very good shot either. As you can see, the fact that these states lay down causes it to be entirely possible for you to put say, a red dot sight or a scope on there. And you never really have to remove these sights for anything. The other stuff there, you can change that out to whatever you like. It, neither will interfere with the other.